Okay, so on to number two. Um, yeah, this one had the LED problem, so it should be pretty easy to fix. Uh, it's also filthy, like look at the amount of dust and junk up in here. It's missing the volume slider. Yeah, we'll test the circuits out as well. Like, we'll test the reset works. We'll make sure everything else is okay. So let me pull this apart and let's get started. Uh, I won't show you the disassembly. It's, you've seen it before and it's kind of boring. So I'll be back in a sec. Taking all the screws out and you flip it over, we can immediately see what's wrong with the LED. So that's good news. We don't need to replace the LED. It just looks like it's disconnected. So that's a win. Um, it just connects in down in here. So we'll, we'll put that back. Um, in a sec, you know, you pull these things apart and you find all sorts of things. Um, when I unscrewed it, uh, the one of the holes, this one up here, had a, a spider's nest in it. Uh, you can still see the remains of that. So uh, nothing was alive, everything was dead. But um, yeah, I don't think Australian Quarantine would have liked that. So I made sure that it was all killed and disposed of. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, you, you never know what you're really importing when you bring these things in. Dirty American spiders. We should probably clean this properly as well. Being a high def model, model it's, uh, it's in demand, it's quite a good unit. We'll take all the RF shield off to begin with and just see what we're looking at. Then we'll make sure everything's working and go from there, reconnect the LED. Let's uh, pull some screws out and keep going. Okay, so that's all done. Let's lift out the RF shield. It's pretty good underneath. We'll just check for spiders and it's all good. And we're left with the board. So this is a VA3. Okay, so having a close look at this board, the LED connects into here like this. This little yellow connector connects onto the board. And what I've noticed uh, is the pins are broken. So that's why it's just dangling. If you look really closely, the pins are still in the connector. And if we look on the board itself down here, pins are missing so that's uh look it's still easy we can fix this we can do anything what we're gonna have to do is go a little bit further and pull out the entire board which is only a few more screws get underneath that and solder in some new pins or just solder the wires directly to the board let's pull this board out and take a look so just like before on the uh, the first model you know you lift up this little audio connector you've got one screw down in the corner You've got a couple of screws here on the heat shield for the um, voltage regulators and you've got the two screws on the cartridge slot. Okay, so board's out. There we go. Now we've got a power connector here. We, we can either leave that or just disconnect it. Let's take a look. There's our pins there. If we flip it, it's just right here. So, okay, so I've, I've had a hunt around and you know, the boards that I've got don't really have some any pin headers sort of the right size sticking up. So I've just grabbed a cap, like a big fat uh, 50 volt, 10 microfarad cap, and it's got some decent legs on it. Uh, now we don't, we don't have to ruin the cap at all. We can still use it. Let's just take the uh, paper packaging off the bottom of these legs. The pins are pretty decent. Let's just see if they're a, you know, a good sort of fit for this solution. They're actually not too bad. If I sort of cut it off here, and just use those stubby bits. Might work quite well, but I definitely solder this into the board first and then trim it off afterwards just to make it easier to work with. So I'll give that a go. And if that doesn't work, we'll just solder the wires to the boards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the remains of these pins out, which are right here and see what we can do. Okay, so I managed to get a reasonable solder job done there. Underneath the board, it's just pushed out the old pins. We can just trim that off like that. Uh, it should look nice and clean now. And we'll cut these legs about there. So keep them really short. To take that off. And hopefully you can see this on the camera. I'll just get in there with the pliers and straighten up these legs a little bit. That should do it. And Okay, got the cable, and let's see if it fits. So, hopefully you can see that. And it does, fits quite well. So, we'll just do a quick test. Quickly chuck on a 
game and let's power it on. First of all, did we get? Yes, and if you look down here, our LED's working. So there you go. That was that was a quick and easy fix. Okay, so I'll go through the rest of this board, kind of just clean it. It's not very fun to watch, and I'll put it all back together. Okay, so I've given all these parts a bit of a clean up. All the plastic parts and the top, of course, um, and even these uh, little inside uh, RF shield trays. So I'll just quickly put all this back together and I'll reassemble the, the unit. So that sits in like that. Uh, the board, the board simply chuck slots in. Just make sure it's seated uh, nice and securely. This volume slider, it is a little bit dirty. I'll just grab some uh, contact cleaner and just really clean that up a little bit. Yeah, it's working fine. Yep, it's like a little lubricant, but it's also, um, it's, it's, a, it's like a solvent. So this will clean up electronic contacts and uh, get rid of any gunk that's on them. Uh, it's, it's a similar product to isopropyl alcohol. But uh, I find that the solvent, uh, the actual contact cleaner, works better half the time. Uh, I think for cleaning cartridges, isopropyl is better, but for contacts, just as the name suggests, this contact cleaner is really good. Okay, so one other thing on these Mega Drives or Genesis is the volume slider the button seems to break out and what actually happens is underneath, underneath that there's this little plastic piece that runs and slides up underneath the uh, little channel there. And the button simply clips in like that on top and it'll slide, so it just breaks out. So we can, we'll put a touch of glue on, under that. Let me grab the unit, put, put our volume slider in place, turn it over and we'll put our backing plate on, uh, just something like that. Now you'd be careful here you don't glue the whole thing down because uh, that'll be a bit of a nightmare. I'm just going to hold it and with a tiny bit of plastic super glue, just, uh, just glue that in place. I think you can see that. Yeah, just put a couple of dabs of glue. I'm pushing up on it with my fingers underneath just so it doesn't touch and set so the whole thing still slides. And I think we're good to go there. So you can just uh, grab a spare part or Put the original back together just glue it back into place okay right so that's number two all put back together cleaned up and running so everything works the volume slider worked i, I chucked some headphones in and uh, tested that out reset works reset yes so and i've also put a um a bit of a coating of uh like an automotive sort of plastic rejuvenation thing on this one so that's all good to go uh it's still a bit wet but uh yeah done